I mean, yes, you know, as we're recording, there's a pause and we're in shelter in place, et cetera. And we need accountability and support every day. And the more you're getting it, and I mean, the more you're open to receiving it, the more you can succeed. Like nobody has built a successful business by themselves. Welcome back to the Balance Boldly podcast for ambitious women in business and a few brave men. I'm Nikita Thigpen, your host and balance and relationship advisor, partnering with you to change the narrative so we can amplify intimacy within and across your relationships, and you can have the freedom, flexibility, and confidence to thrive in work life and in love. Speaking of love, y'all, here we are, midway through season 19. Our theme, love and dot, dot, dot wherever you want to go with it. I am super excited today because I think the expert that I was gifted with the opportunity and honor to bring to you today speaks just the reflection of what dot, dot, dot is. There's so many facets to her. There's so much beauty and interest and complexity and simplicity at the same exact time. Professional, all together, fully glittery, sparklicious, and just amazing in so many ways. I will, I'll, I will not continue to like keep her from you. I will jump right in and bring you to Emmy Kirshner. She is an amazing investor, serial entrepreneur, coach, and international speaker. Emmy masterfully combines her intuitive abilities with her analytical sense to help driven entrepreneurs become the visionary CEO of their business, resulting in, catch this y'all, doubling revenue. When she's not out helping her clients move from breakdown to breakthrough in their business, Emmy is the host of the Tribe of Leaders podcast, where she interviews successful entrepreneurs who share how they have developed their leadership skills through the success and, quote that, and challenges of growing their business. Emmy, welcome to the Balance Bully Podcast. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. That was the most beautiful intro I've ever heard. Oh, thank you. Don't you love hearing yourself? Like, yeah, that's me. That's me. I do. I do. (laughs) I love it. I would love for you to just take a moment before we dive into our dot, dot, dot of what you bring to the table and share a little bit of what you have going on in the world with your tribe of leaders and how you're really just kind of helping them tap in beyond that space of stuck that they were in and kind of move forward in their lives. Absolutely. So I think my, like my zone of genius, the thing, my superhero power is I have, um, both a really in-depth analytical side and a creative intuitive side that I've man- I've managed to marry really well so that I can help my clients who tend to be a little bit more on the creative right brain side mm-hmm. and help them create systems and structures that allow them to drive their business to new levels of revenue and profitability in ways that they wouldn't be able to if they didn't have those systems and structures in place. Yeah. No, absolutely. So giving giving them some anchors to really hold themselves to and to measure their accountability and their growth is really important. Yeah, yeah. And they're getting out of that employee mindset piece and moving into a true leadership position and then building their team around that. And I love it. It's so much fun because they have like these incredible ahas and they're like, <gasps> Like you, you took the thing that was like holding me back and broke it down into these five simple steps. And now I can go achieve this. No, I absolutely love that. I'm curious because I'm sure that they're dealing with a lot of things that are restricting them from being able to live a life of and dot, dot, dot. Are there things like patterns that you're seeing amongst your clients and me that are, are showing up as things that might not necessarily be just about the business, but it's clearly impacting their business that are coming up from them, from them really like fully living a a good, enjoyable life? Yeah, for most of them, it's really about I'm not making enough money and I'm working so hard. Yeah. And that and then comes after, you know, we've kind of hit the next level for them Mm -hmm. and they can breathe that sigh of relief and be like, oh, now I can have this full life that I've been dreaming of that I, that's why I started this whole business and, you know, was beginning to think was completely impossible. 
Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, especially if they have a set point in their mind around whatever their story is with the possibilities of making money and what those limits are that they place on themselves, yeah. which I know comes up for a lot of people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's been interesting to see, you know, just with everything that's happening right now, my clients really step into um, a whole new level of, I want to create and connect with people, you know, on a, on a, in a different place, in a different space um, and, and how they're growing that way. Yeah. That's really exciting to see. No, that is fantastic. Yeah. So I have to ask on the other side, because here you are, a business coach and strategist out here in the world, helping people kind of maneuver and grow through their own challenges. Is it helping you to live a life of and dot, dot, dot? Or are you feeling restricted from this experience that you're in now? Because you, you've also had some other hats of building skill as a health coach and, you know, just a powerful professional before you realized that you had this zone of genius to really help people push through with their money right. story. Yeah. I think my entire life has been an and. <laughs> because I, I don't see it as like being defined by one thing. And um, it, for me, it started with, you know, how do I raise my kids as a newly single mom and do something that's meaningful yeah. and, you know, have fun because the fun piece is critical for me. And if I'm not having fun, then it affects everything else. Yeah. No, I understand that. So what does fun look like for you? Like what is raising Emmy's like higher vibration and her energy? What, what is that? It, it's a lot of very simple play. Okay. Um, and, and silly things like the, I've played with my kids. Like we, one winter um, when it was cold and it snowed seemingly forever, we started playing beach ball volleyball in the house. And, mm. and like every day. And one, it, like it got us moving around, but two, it just totally de-stressed me from, you know, my work day or, or feeling, um, it was really dark, it was winter. Yeah, so I was just feeling like, oh, I need to hibernate, as you and I have talked about on many occasions. <laughs> uh, so simple things like that. Like I like to sometimes just draw, sometimes reading. I'm always open to traveling anywhere. Like that is my most favorite thing is just seeing new places and exploring and, and seeing what people are doing in those in those locations differently and the same. What are they eating? What are their cultural differences? All of that stuff gives me so much joy. No, I love that. I love that first, it's not an overly overly complicated thing that has to spark some joy for you, right? Like, yeah. oh no, I'm not, I don't feel good unless I fly to Alaska because you can't do that right now. Um, right. <laughs> but being able to just take stock in the simplistic things that are available to you and to be grateful for what you already have and work with that and use those same things that you have access to to pull your energy up is really powerful because there's a lot of people, especially right now, like the time that we're recording this, we are stuck in Philadelphia, at least, in full shelter in place mode. Um, and obviously, this these themes of just kind of moving past what this new normal is that we're experiencing now is going to come up over and over again, I'm pretty sure, uh, through the rest of 2020. Oh. So, right? So yeah. there are a lot of people who are not in tune with the way that you said it, which I think is really important, they're not in tune with what they already have access to because they're so overwhelmed by what they don't have access to right now, you know? Right. And I think that, again, that's where the and is, is, mm -hmm. is it's so easy to focus on the things that were either taken away or stopped or are no longer happening. And instead of, and that's where your brain naturally wants to go to, too. And instead of that, I'm always looking at, well, what can I do? Right. If I can't do A, B, C, D, you know, E, what does F and G offer me? <laughs> that almost sounded like you was cursing. What does F and G <laughs> offer me? <laughs> no, like, you, no, not this time. <laughs> right? I'm like, well, they definitely won't give you H if you're talking like that. No, um, <laughs> you know, I'm such a cornball and I'm so okay with it. <laughs> Um, no, I, I really do appreciate you pointing that out because sometimes it's just that moment of reflection and, and that shift back to the perspective of what I am is enough 
and what I have is enough for right now. Absolutely. And, and maybe playing with it a different way. Like I, I got these beach balls and they were tiny ones. They're like, you can hold one in your hand from some party. And I had just shoved them in some corner and found them, you know, when I was looking for something else. Hmm. And then I was like, oh, let's, you know, hit these around. And then it became a game. And then we made rules. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so it was just letting it evolve. And I'm super connected to my inner five-year-old. Like, I don't know, small childlike things that are, you know, mm -hmm. moderately ridiculous entertain me for hours. Yes. Uh, and it's a balance to a lot of the deep work that I do with my clients and helping them really understand, you know, what limitations that they need to break through. Uh, so it's what keeps things fresh for me. No, I love that. And, you know, you from side conversations, you and I both know we have so much synergy and so many things that are in a, a, alignment that it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> and to, right. And tapping into your inner five year old is a huge thing for me as well to keep that curiosity and that creativity going. It also reminds us to just be confident in exploring and not being in control all the time, uh, which is hard for me personally, because I, you know, I'm really ambitious and I, I come from a super academic scientific world and all the things. And I used education as my hiding space for many, many, many years that, you know, certifications, blah, 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 like all the stuff as milestones and anchor points for me. So I lost that touch with myself many, many years ago of just being okay with not knowing what was gonna happen in the next hour. And I don't mean from like a, you know, will you not have a house type of perspective right. or anything, but you know, like I would schedule years ago, I scheduled everything down to sex. Like, okay, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Like, uh -huh. and my husband would roll over and I'm like, mm -mm, we got 12 more hours until he's like, what the world? But I got so ridiculously controlling and kind of lost touch with just being okay with exploring. And once I started to tap into my inner five-year-old, forget the work that I was doing in the world. It was like, Nikita, be first partaker of th that which you are teaching, fully live that life out that you're teaching. When I started doing that, it made a world of difference in my business, my parenting, my marriage, you know, my, as, a, as the oldest sister of my family, like all the things. So I totally resonate with you with that one. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to play. And I think we forget, like it's somewhere in our adulthood, we forget because we get bogged down with responsibilities and obligations and everything else that being a you know moderately responsible grown up you know requires. And the Dalai Lama said the point of life is happiness. Yeah. And for me, then that goes right into playing. So right. you know, maybe play is not the, the right word for everybody, but having fun and enjoying and focusing on that and and centering yourself around you know how can i enjoy this moment yeah what it brings to me i think is so important it is and look and we're going to overuse that word today but and isn't it something interesting that you see with both your clients and maybe yourself at you know one point before you got to the space of kind of allowing the play in where you are now where people refuse to open themselves up to the curiosity and the creativity and the play that could actually recalibrate and recharge them later. Like, did, have you seen that with some of your clients? Like they're so postured, like overly postured and they can't relax enough to even sometimes participate in the activity that you're doing to help them break through so they can mm -hmm. see their stuck point in their business. Yeah, because they're afraid to, like, if they let go of, and kind of what you were talking about a few moments ago, if they let go of that control, then, you know, they don't know what's going to happen. And that's scary for them. Yeah, definitely. So it's, yeah, it's really challenging. And, and once they do, and they kind of, they get comfortable with being vulnerable and uncomfortable, like, that's where the space is. And a lot of times just having that pause, is like, that's where the creativity is. A thousand percent. So. Right? For you, for tribe of leaders, for the community, not the podcast, although I know they, yeah. they speak to each other, right. um, but for your community, and I know that you do a lot of great work, both individually and in the group programs that you have for, you know, people who are ready, willing, and able to invest that energy into themselves, like forget fees, but there's energy into being reflective of who you are and where you are now versus where you want to go. But when they're ready to do that, how does your community uh, support them 
and making sure that they still always continue to kind of tap in and and have that time for curiosity, creativity, and for play. Yeah, so what's been really cool to see in my community and amongst my clients when we're all together, particularly over the last couple of weeks, is a new level of accountability and support that everybody is holding each other to. Uh, and, and really creating a movement to continue moving forward in their business. Yeah, I know that that's extremely important right now on, um, on so many levels because, and I, I, I paused as I was saying it because I'm thinking that we're, we're recording this in April, in mid April, and the, the show will air in about a month from now. And most of you guys are listening to podcasts. You know how this works. So there's no big secret to that. You're, you're smart about your time and you're recording. But the, the topics and the themes and the, the points that are being shared because they're coming from Emmy's life are clearly evergreen, right? Like there's no timestamp on how valuable the wisdom is from this uh, conversational air that we're having now. But it made me think of this right now moment that we're having, at least in Philadelphia, which Emmy is, uh, we're like a rock's throw from each other. I know. Um, <laughs> if it wasn't for social distancing, we could be doing this in person. Um, <laughs> but with that, I know accountability and community like Tribe of Leaders, like what you're offering there is so crucial because people are lonely. And yeah. It's important. I mean, they're they're still busy. I'm not busy, like overly busy, but they're productive and they still have things to do, whether they're working from home, figuring out what to do from home, trying to take advantage of a new opportunity to create something they never quote unquote had time for before. They really need what you're offering. Well, thank you. I, I believe they do. And it's, I mean, yes, you know, as we're recording, there's a pause and we're in shelter in place, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And we need accountability and support every day. And the more you're getting it, and I mean, the more you're open to receiving it, the more you can succeed. Like nobody has built a successful business by themselves, regardless of what's happening globally speaking um, or economically speaking. A thousand percent agree. And I think that would be the other part of the dot, 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 right? Like yeah. you can love yourself, love your relationships, love the, the business baby. Cause for a lot of us, our, our businesses are our babies um, or our, our thought leadership. If you're a professional that's in the corporate world and you're a thought leader inside your industry, it's mm -hmm. very much the baby that you've been growing up. But, but there's an and dot, dot, dot to that in terms of you taking it to the next level. You don't have to do everything by yourself. Um, ha right. Like having some accountability is important. Also learning when to delegate and what to delegate is super hugely important. And a lot of us have so many trust issues that that's just not a thing. That's like a dream for somebody else. Like delegate. You want me to share some of what's going on in my business so somebody can actually help me and I can do my zone of genius. Uh -uh. <laughs> or I should say, and another, and the other conversation I hear is but then I have to train them and it takes so long and they aren't going to do it as well as I do. And then I have to do all this other work and, you know, insert more. And the bottom line is, is you can only produce so much as one human being. Yeah. And you should only produce so much as one person, right? Like yeah. if, if your goal is to serve as many possible, many people as possible as well in excellence as possible, then you need to be able to let go some of the parts that are holding you back from being able to show up fully, which to your point is your superpower, your zone of genius, like to be able to go further. And I, I think that's also a hiding place, like how education was a hiding place for me, um, you know, many, many moons ago. Now I can educate myself as a lifelong learner without kind of the addiction to stress that I used to have right. when that was my hiding space. Uh, for a lot of people being able to hold on to all those pieces. And I'm not talking about because you don't have, you know, the income yet because your business is too new or, you know, or hasn't kind of taken root yet or not even just the, the time perspective of being able to train other people. A lot of people are holding on to all the things because that's their badge of honor. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I have all this thing, you know, like, and not letting go that control because that's their hiding space. And once you remove it, it exposes what they're not doing. That spouse, that partner, that lover that they don't have, want to have, could have had, they don't have time for them no more. You know, they, they don't want time for them no more, you know, whatever the case is. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Are you seeing that as well? Yeah, I think everybody's kind of taking a look at like, how do I, how do I evaluate what is working and what's not working right now? And, um, and really stepping in at a different level, like, all right, so this wasn't working and this doesn't make me feel good. So what do I do differently? I think is the question that they're asking. And I love that because that's where they get to up level again. Yeah. If they're ready, because, you yeah. know, that's the other side of it. Like this, this moment that we've all been thrust into, regardless of what part of the country you're in right now, and you're listening to this, if you are in this world, you have received some at least residual from the earthquake like shift that we've all experienced yeah. because of COVID-19. And I believe for many people, some a little bit sooner than others, it's exposing the things that we didn't want to deal with. And now we're forced to, to look at, and I don't mean it just in relationships. I mean it with everything. If you were quote unquote too busy to eat right or to exercise or, you know, okay. like, to, you know what I'm saying? Like it's all of it. Yeah. Right. Like, and really to be living fully and to have a full life, you've got to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and make that time. I mean, that's what, a lot of what I teach my people is you have to prioritize yourself and make the time to sleep enough, drink enough water, eat well, move your body and work on your business. And that seems like a lot, but it's really about choosing top level priorities and only focusing on those and saying no to everything else. Absolutely. A thousand percent agree. This is what makes you awesome at what you do, mama. Thank you. <laughs> so when you're not helping other people with their top level priorities, I'm going to piggyback on your term. How yeah. do you give yourself permission to pause? Uh, I have to say that I do schedule it. Mm -hmm. um, not mad at that. Yeah. And, and partly because I love what I do. So it's easy to let that you know, encompass my entire existence. Yeah. Um, I also know that I don't perform as well if I don't take breaks. So, you know, there's time on weekends. Um, I try to do a three day weekend, you know, whether it's at home or we go somewhere like every six to eight weeks and then a lot of a vac uh, vacation time. Yeah. And I know you love a specific hibernation in the winter. My yeah, holidays. I just want to kind of hang out and wrap myself in a blanket. So, <laughs> you know, I am not mad at that at all. I'm right in alignment with you when it comes yeah. to just carving out that time to really be still and receive everything you need to receive, release everything you need to release mm -hmm. and just let, let things be literally. Yeah, I do a lot of planning then mm -hmm. of what I want to bring into the next year and having that slow time is so beneficial. Absolutely. Oh, I love you so much. You're so oh, awesome. <laughs> got you. Oh, thank you. So how can people connect with you to get some more of Emmy and to follow and find out about Tribe of Leaders? Where can they go? Yeah, absolutely. So two best ways is one, check out my podcast. Um, it's the Tribe of Leaders. And you can find it on Apple Podcasts or whatever they're calling it now and <laughs> much every other podcast outlet. Uh, and then also would love to invite everybody to join my free Facebook community, also called the Tribe of Leaders, and come play with us. Yeah, no, I love that. Definitely. And I'm going to say, please go play with Emmy. That could be your new hashtag. Come play with Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> when you create that into a new program, just remember little old Nikita and give me 0.001%. That's all I ask. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No worries. It's done. Emmy, you are fantastic and sparklicious in so many ways. I'm so grateful and honored that you carved out time to literally come and play with us and nurture our audience and just be your transparent, authentic, leading self. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. It was such a pleasure to be here. So awesome. You're so awesome. Woo! Balance Boldly listeners, you ambitiously bold and brave people out there. I love you so much. You guys know it. I show up for you because I love you so much. Thank you for all of the congratulations, the DMs, the emails, all the things that you guys have sent to us to, you know, acknowledge and congratulate the fact that Feeds 
spot, uh, rated us the number eight out of the top 35 women in business podcast to follow for 2020. I thank you so much for that. I do not take it as a slight for any, you know, just anything. I can't even talk. That's how excited I am. Um, thank you. Thank you. You guys know we have been doing this for a really, really long time. Um, and we're just grateful that people are listening and they're paying attention. It matters, especially when I'm able to like snatch up awesome experts like Emmy Kushner and have her carve out time for you guys to just share and give you a little bit of what's going on behind the scenes for, you know, things that you couldn't normally Google about her. So I'm grateful for that. Of course, if you like what you hear, make sure that you subscribe, rate and share Help us ensure that the ambitiously bold and brave have access to these valuable life, love, and business balance tools. I'm so grateful for you guys. You know, you can continue to follow me at Ask Nikita everywhere. Just look it up. ID, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, you got it. And if you haven't already at the time of this particular show, if you haven't picked up my new book, Selfish, Permission to Pause, Live, Love, and Laugh Your Way to Joy, make sure you do you know it is my personal transformation story it is not a business book it is all about me exposing all of my flaws and all of my trauma and all of the stuff that i had to push through to get to my next level of greatness so i could live my own life of and and i hope that it nurtures you and just helps you understand that there is hope and victory on the other side so whether you need it for yourself or you want to gift it to someone else i hope that you go pick it up Wherever books are sold, Barnes and Nobles, Amazon, IndieBound, you name it, we're out there. In the interim, go create your balance and create your joy, but remember, do it boldly. 